Hey everybody, I'm Jeff and welcome to JDS Design Labs. This channel is all about my journey in home labbing, servers, networking, and basically anything that I can get my hands on with tech. Um, I wanted to use it as a place to document what I'm working on and hopefully use it as a place to inspire others to not only maybe just work with home labs, but to explore what you have and explore technology and just have fun. Um, if you're into messing around with old gear and things of that nature and just messing with things till maybe they break and trying to fix them, I think you might be in the right place. So stick around. In this video here, I'm going to show you how you can kickstart your own home lab and how I started mine with just some old parts laying around the house. It's pretty easy and it gives a little bit of a new life to things you never thought would actually work again. So go grab that old laptop. Maybe bring that desktop out of the closet or your storage area and let's repurpose them and give them some new life. Let's jump in. So here's the system that I'm working with. It's an older desktop. It's an HP pavilion that I've repurposed for the foundation of my home lab. It's running on an AMD A10 5700 processor paired with about 20 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. I also swapped out the one terabyte Barracuda hard drive for a 120 gigabyte SSD to help it boot faster and run smoother, especially when I'm running my VMs. I've also got a GTX 750 Ti installed. It's a little bonus that helps with the light GPU tasks, video encoding, and opens the door to some cool things later on like pass through or graphical workloads. Before getting into any setup, I gave the system a bit of TLC which included opening it up and replacing the thermal paste on the CPU. The original paste was dried out and cracked and really gross, not ideal for thermal performance. I cleaned it off with some isorobal alcohol and with some cotton swabs and then applied a fresh new layer of thermal paste which I purchased for around $10. After that, I reinstalled the heatsink, made sure that the fans were running, and then I got it ready to boot. So what makes this a great place to start? Well, you see, the AMD A10 5700 is a four core 3.4 gigahertz CPU. It's not top of the line by any of today's standards, but it's more than capable of running lightweight virtual machines and self-hosted services to enhance my home network. And it's not working alone. Memory plays a big role in how many virtual machines or services I can run at once. And in this build, I've got 20 gigabytes of DDR3 to work with. It's only running at about 1600 mega transfers per second, but the 20 gigabytes is more than enough to play around with. And I don't necessarily need crazy speeds to run the services I want to use anyways. For a budget build, it works great. And for a home lab, it works even better because now I have a bunch of additional RAM to use for really cheap. It's reliable, and it's efficient to still get the job done. Throw in a 120GB SSD, and yeah, this setup actually works really well for starting my first home lab. It's not flashy, but it's solid, and honestly, that's all I really need right now. But how do I actually run all of this? Well, we need something called a hypervisor. A hypervisor is basically software that lets you create and manage virtual machines, kind of like running multiple computers inside of one physical machine. There's a few different hypervisor options you can choose from based off of your preferences and your setup. A couple of these options include VMware ESXi, XCPNG, VirtualBox, and Hyper-V if you're on Windows. I've decided to go with Proxmox because it's an open source hypervisor, it has a great community behind it, and it's lightweight, meaning that it doesn't take a ton of hardware and resources to run smoothly. Now that we've got our hardware and hypervisor sorted, the next question is, what do I actually want to run in my home? Well, that's the cool part. There's no single right answer. Your home lab can be used for a ton of things. It just depends on your goals. You can run virtual machines, host a DNS filter like Pi-hole, spin up web servers, manage Docker containers, experiment with self-hosted apps, set up network monitoring, or even run game servers. Personally, I want to use my home lab to experiment with virtualization, run a couple lightweight VMs, set up a Minecraft server for my friends, and try out a few open source services to improve my home network. Whether you're learning, testing, hosting, or just tinkering, a home lab is a perfect space to experiment safely and build your skills. 
Now that we've talked about what a home lab can be, let me show you what I'm actually running in mine so far. I've got a Windows Server 2022 VM hosting a Minecraft server for me and my friends. I'm also running Pi-hole in a container so that I can block ads and so that I can use custom domains in my network. And I have my own OpenVPN server set up. That way I can still connect even when I'm not at home. And while the core setup is running, I still have a few more pieces of gear to add and test out. I've got a TP-Link 5 port PoE switch ready to go, which will help power future devices directly over Ethernet, like my Raspberry Pi. I'm also planning to bring in my Ubiquiti Edge Router Lite to take more control over routing and network segmentation. And finally, I've got a Cisco 10 port gigabit managed switch, which should give a lot more flexibility with VLANs and network management as the lab grows. So do you have your own home lab? What exactly are you running in it? I'd love to know and maybe ask for ideas of your own for what I can put in mine next. If you like this video, feel free to hit a thumbs up or press the subscribe button down below. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one because I'm excited to start this journey with you. Take care.